Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of the soulful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, our culture, our background and whatever interests uh, you. But today I want to speak about one of the topics that are really important not only for Ukraine, not only for uh, countries that are located or border Russia, but for the world in general. And that is about the threats that Putin likes to repeat uh, about the usage of nuclear weapons. I know this threat was the reason for the Cold War that existed for decades between the United States and the USSR. And then for decades the world seemed normal, the world seemed sane and people did not use nuclear weapons as an argument in any kind of conversations. Ukraine was even, I don't know, at first I thought clever enough, now I think stupid enough to give up our nuclear weapons to Russia and as a result signed the Budapest Memorandum, which is a paper, worthless paper or even worse than that because it demonstrates how international agreements do not work and the countries who promise to guarantee us safety actually one of these countries attacked us so budapest memorandum is a huge mistake that was committed by ukraine and other countries who support our demilitarization now russia allows itself and the world closed eyes on many of russia's mistakes once again because they had nuclear weapons and I personally think think it's really bad, like uh, when uh, the decisions or the attitudes to the country or to the government are based not on this logical understanding on some particular standards or rules, but based on the absence or presence of nuclear weapons in a country. That is totally wrong. So now uh, Putin, understanding that he is losing this war, that he is also losing support in Russia, makes a couple of desperate steps. One of which is mobilization in Russia, and we see there are lots of protest and dissatisfaction. And the second one is the threats that he likes to talk about, uh, about the usage of nuclear weapons if he does not manage to win this war in Ukraine. Well, the answer is that even after he uses nuclear weapons, he will not win this war. Because let's imagine just for one terrible second that he does that and here is a question and what happens next? So everybody is terrified and allow him to live, allow him to continue threatening the world and to continue throwing nuclear bombs on other countries. Of course not. So if there is a small portion of sanity in his head or in the people who surround him, it goes without saying that uh, nuclear weapons should never be used. It's a suicide for any government that will use it because that's the way the planet can be saved, the only way the planet can be saved. So once again, I don't think Putin plans to do that. <sighs> being hidden somewhere in a bunker and uh, it is not just his decision, a couple of people are involved in the process of activating this nuclear bomb, so maybe these people will stop him, maybe some intelligence services already work with them, or maybe um, Russian nuclear weapons are in a really bad condition just as Russian soldiers, so all of that is possible and not all of that uh, makes me think that it is not very likely. But from the other point of view, I was among those normal people who believed that full-scale war is impossible in the century of Europe in the 21st century, and Putin did that. So, knowing that he is crazy, knowing that he is paranoid, knowing, knowing that he does not like to analyze the real-life situation and he prefers to live hidden in the world of his ideas and manias, we have to agree that everything is possible. And uh, that's why his desire to uh, conduct referendums on the temporarily occupied territories is extremely toxic and dangerous. Why? Well, I had a couple of videos where I talk about these fake referendums that Russia tried to conduct on the territory of Ukraine, starting with the annexation of Crimea. Of course, all of these referendums are totally fake because they are not organized according to the rules. People did not have normal choice and there were soldiers with machine guns everywhere. 
So the choice is already known and it's a typical Russian and Soviet practice. When you have elections, but years before these elections, you already know the results. These bulletins are prepared, people are frightened and no free will is planned. So in Russia, in Soviet Union, elections are not actually elections. This is just a demonstration of something that their dictator had already decided. So similar things happened when Crimea was annexated, uh, annexed. And now with Kherson, for example, this is just the same what they want to do. Of course, people in Kherson and Kherson region are uh, totally against Russian occupation. Many of them are already free and happy to be liberated by the Ukrainian armed forces. But those that are occupied and uh, by the way, Russian soldiers wanted to leave Kherson and Putin personally did not allow them to do so. And it seems to me that for a couple of weeks, he already rules and controls all the military actions uh, in Ukraine, and which actually leads to his conflict with the military. Because once again, as all dictators, he started to believe that he's professional in everything, including military tactics. But it cannot be like that. He's really far away from what is going on on the battlefields of Ukraine. And he interferes with the plans and tactics even of not the best, but at least educated, more or less professional Russian generals. But <clears throat> they stay in Kherson for a while until we make them uh, run out of there. And they plan to organize a referendum there. Once again, there were a couple of days planned for this referendum and it failed all the time. Because they feel they don't get support, uh, no one will actually um, treat the results of this referendum as any sign of Ukrainian people's will and many other reasons, plus it's dangerous for them also because their position is huge, the rebellion and partisan movements are really strong, but they want this uh, referendums to be held and to pretend for other dictatorships who will say yes, these are now Russian lands, so they want to pretend that this referendums are held and people choose to be a part of Russia. And then when we uh, work with these territories, when we come to liberate them, they will say this is already an attack on the Russian territory and this is actually one of the conditions on which Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons. So it is very important to liberate Kherson and not to let them conduct these referendums and for the rest of the world to demonstrate that we are not afraid of Putin and his threats because whenever we show our fear, dictators, uh, tyrants and bullies become stronger and more confident in their evil actions. Also, uh, Russian army demonstrate that they don't care about the world, they don't care about any international laws when they target uh, pow uh, atomic power stations. This is just the same as usage of the nuclear weapons. Less than a week ago, they have shot at one of the southern atomic uh, power stations. And it seems to me that the missile hit 300 meters from the power station. And in case something happened, it will be death, not only for Ukrainians who live in this region, it will be death for all of these soldiers who are close to this object. But remembering what they did in Chernobyl, how they dig trenches in the Red Forest, completely radioactive forest, there is nothing that we can expect from uh, Russian soldiers and Russian government. So um, if you ask me, am I afraid of uh, the nuclear war? I cannot answer the question directly because when I think logically, I understand it's total nonsense. But once again, this all war, is total nonsense and Putin will not achieve anything with it and he will not achieve anything with bombarding us or other countries of the European Union or the United States with a nuclear bomb. It will only lead to a faster fall of his regime and maybe some other serious actions taken. But he's crazy enough and uh, he sees that he loses even when you analyze his nonverbal behavior mobilization, which is not good for him and for his support in the society, and also the strength that Ukrainians and the world demonstrate in a coalition against his evil plans. So we have to be uh, careful. I know that in some Ukrainian um, uh, pharmacies, people buy 
various um, pills that protect from radiation and we had this very sad experience with Chernobyl and believe me for Ukrainians it is not just like a film it's a part of our history of our modern history and honestly I think we had too many problems within this 30-40 years it's pretty good that we are so strong, that we are independent, that we are confident, that we are fighting and succeeding, which shows that we are really strong nations. But your countries, your governments that support us make us even stronger and I'm very grateful for that. Please let me know what, you, what would you like to see in my future vlogs. Maybe you want me to take you somewhere in the city to show you something. Let me know, I will be glad to do that. And tomorrow I invite you to watch the next episode of Soviet Myths Debunked, where we will speak about Putin and Stalin and is there anything in common between them and why on earth Russians worship Stalin so much. Thank you for your support. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. And most importantly, thank you for being with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!